you, Jesus. You are the one who's seated in the highest place. God, we praise your name. We bless your name. We lift your name higher. Ah, Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is your name, Jesus.
than what people say, Jehovah. You are bigger than what people say, Jehovah.
are the owner of everything. You deserve today. You deserve today. of the Holy Spirit is to and for you and your children and to and for all that are far away even to and for as many as the Lord our God invites and bids to come to himself the Holy Spirit we need the Holy Spirit as at the time of the disciple now we need the Holy Spirit churches because we need to influence in this world where everything just is turning bad everything that just is, is changing we need the Holy Spirit because we, we still need to influence the mission that has been given to us that had been given to us by Jesus it was to go and to make all the nations the disciple Jesus also said that we should stay awake and pray so this morning we're gonna pray we're gonna ask the Holy Spirit to pour our life we're gonna ask the Holy Spirit to baptize us this morning again it is possible as it was that day it is also possible today this morning to be baptized it is also possible this morning to receive something new from the Holy Spirit something fresh for the Holy Spirit yes you all already have the Holy Spirit but it can renew something in you again you can be, become like Peter the same Peter we are talking here is, is, is the same one who just in, in, few, in, in the verses uh, before when you are reading it did not Jesus by three times but after he received the Holy Spirit he could be able to stand up before the crowd and talk to them the same Peter who could be influenced in last in, in past verses by the crowd now become influencing the same crowd and three thousand souls give their lives to Jesus that day this morning it is possible let us just pray Holy Spirit we need you this morning is sitting need you Holy Spirit, we need you. Rabra zita rika yere bosha. Rebra zete reba ba 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 bosha. Hey, we need you, Holy Spirit. We need you, Holy Spirit. Come in this place, Holy Spirit, this morning. We need you, Holy Spirit. We need you. He sitting need you. Reba ba 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 bosha. Reba ba 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 bosha. We need you, Holy Spirit. 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 My church needs you, Holy Spirit. We need you to influence this nation. We need you to influence this country. We need you to influence this world. Holy Spirit, we need you, Holy Spirit, to be courageous talking about Jesus, to become courageous, to become boldness when it's about talking about Jesus. Because we have a mission to accomplish. And without the Holy Spirit, we won't do that. Holy Spirit, we need you in this place. We need you, Holy Spirit. Rebra zita rika yere bosha. Rebra zete re bosha. Reka suta rebra yere bosha. We need you, Holy Spirit, in this in this place. We need you. We need you to influence families. We need you to influence everywhere we are going. At university, at work, everywhere we are going. We need you to influence Holy Spirit. We need to receive something, something this morning, something new this morning coming from you, Holy Spirit. 
in order to fill the mission Jesus gave us. Please pray, pray. Can someone pray in tongue? If you know how to pray in tongue, just start praying in tongues. Yeshua, 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 type of prayer and fasting for 40 days that have already started at the main temple and for us for the 21 days we're gonna just pray for our pastors for our uh, responsible for all the key actors that are going to work along during during this time of prayer we're gonna pray for a unity of spirit we're gonna pray for a fresh unction on them so that the work that God wants to do just be manifest among us and we are we are also gonna pray for us so that God provides for us during this time during these 21 days so that we lack with nothing let us pray in the name of Jesus you are faithful we thank you this morning again for everything you're doing we thank you because we provide during this time of prayer and fasting we'll have and at the end of it all I thank you in advance because I know that everyone here is gonna have a testimony Is city is gonna have a testimony I thank you father
Thank you, Lord, for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you, thank you because you don't change. You never change. You are the same. The same God who created heavens and earth. The one we used to read in the Bible. You are the same that we are praising now. The same we worship today. And you will be the same. You will still the same because you never change. Thank you for your blessing that you are pouring from the beginning of this service. Thank you because we are not going to go out of this place just the way we came in. Because you are the mighty God that we love, that we serve. That's why we are happy to belong to you. Yesterday, long ago, we've been belonging to our families, to our tradition. But now we, we are yours, Lord. We love you because you love us. And you give us all those blessings that we cannot even imagine because of love. Thank you for your love. From our hearts, Lord, we say thank you. Thank you. You are so precious to us. You heal our hearts. That's why we love you. We love you. We adore you this morning. You are God. And there is no one else beside you. No one else like you. In our family, in our country, where we used to work, even in this church, no one is like you. That's why we are happy to be yours. Because you are unique. You are unique in our life. Even if we can think many things about you, but you are more than what we can think. You are more than what we can imagine. Because you are just God. And you are not even God because we call you God. Because you are more than God. Really, truly speaking, you are not really God. You are more than God. God is just a way for us to identify you. But you are more than that. You are exceedingly, abundantly more than weights. That's why we love you in this morning. We love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. I want to teach us this little song that I was uh, um, singing with my brother, the piano player. Uh, it's very simple. It just says, the lamb is worthy. The lamb is worthy. The lamb is worthy. Pastor Freddy, can I have my phone, please? Because I have the text there. The lamb is worthy. Worthy of our praise. Glory and honor. All adoration. The lamb is worthy of all our praise. It's very simple. It goes like this. Can you give me the key, please? It was, uh, can you put it like A, uh, like A, A, yes, A, A. So, uh, let me give you the chords. The Lamb is worthy. Do you believe God is worthy yes. in this place? It's simple. It's very simple. It goes like this. The Lamb is worthy. The Lamb is worthy. The Lamb is worthy of all praise. Oh God, glory and honor.
can the church sing it with me? The Lamb is worthy, let's sing. The Lamb is worthy, is so worthy in this place. The Lamb is worthy, hallelujah. The Lamb is worthy of all praise, of all praise. Glory and honor, all adoration, all adoration. The Lamb is worthy, the Lamb is worthy of all praise. Do you believe it? The Lamb is worthy. If you believe it, sing it loud, louder, louder. The Lamb is worthy. The Lamb is worthy. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lamb is worthy. Oh, the Lamb is worthy. yours Lord you are worthy worthy you accepted to die for us you took that cross you didn't deserve it the king of glory just decided that day to die on the cross naked the very king died that day all the honor that belongs to you you decided to put it away just because of me I was not born yet but you decided to die for me that's why you are worthy of all the glory all the honor that's why every day we seek your face Lord, because you are the most important treasure of our life we thought we needed money we thought we needed cars we needed houses those things are good but you are the very need of our life That's why we seek your face. All adoration belongs to you. We will still seeking, be seeking your face. Because we love you, Jesus. To see your face. Mm. And all of your glory. your grace mm. and all of your beauty this is my cry this is my cry oh Lord my heart's desire my heart desire oh Lord to see your face to see your face 
grace to know your grace this is my cry can we sing it again to see your face to see your face and all of your beauty and all of your beauty to know your grace Lord to know your grace and all of your glory and all of your glory this is my cry this is my cry oh Lord my heart desire oh Lord to see to know your grace this is my cry sing it again this is my cry this is my cry this is my cry oh lord my heart desire oh lord to see Anybody want to see the face of Jesus in this morning? Do you believe that you can see his face before you going out of this place? Because that is what he desires also. He wants you to see his face. He wants you to know his grace. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for what you are doing. We love you in this place. Oh, thank you for your healing. Thank you for your power. Thank you for all those great, all those wonderful things you are doing in our life. Mm, we believe it. We believe your faithfulness and we say amen. 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 Wow. Are you happy to be here? Are you sure? Wow. When you see me, you see that I'm happy to be here because of my tears. And uh, I like to be emotional, you know, in the presence of God. It's not bad. <laughs> there is nothing wrong being emotional in the presence of the Lord because worship can start emotionally, just like prayer. You can start it emotionally and then you finish by the spirit because God is the one who gave you emotions and uh, he wants you also to love him not just because you know you are forced you, you are not supposed to be forced to love God you, you, you have to feel the love for God it must be also a feeling and uh, nothing bad to be crying in the presence of the Lord because it's all about where when I see my life, I see where, where I'm coming from. Then I, I see the grace of God in my life. Amen. So, what are we going to see today? Uh, go in your Bible with me in Matthew chapter 6. I want someone to read in the church. Someone else to read it for us. Can you guys give us one, another mic for that? I want someone else to read the NIV version, preferably. Uh, because this is someone who was saying this is God's translation. <laughs> God's version of the Bible. I don't know if he's right, but I've been people here loving NIV, so... Let's just read from the NIV. Matthew chapter 6 from uh, 16 to 18. Just uh, three verses. Matthew 6 from 16 to 18. Can somebody else read? Do you have a...
Matthew chapter 6 from verse 16 to 18. Yeah. I read in the name of Jesus. Amen. When you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do. For they disfigure their faces to show others they are fasting. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting, but only to your father who is unseen, and your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. I love this uh, last part. And your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Today I want to ask you a question. And I want you to help me to ask your neighbor this question. How are you going to fast? It's a very question, so you, you need answer. <laughs> what did he say? <laughs> okay, 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 let me give you time to greet your neighbor, asking him that question again. So greet one or two people, ask them this question. How are you going to fast? You know, this is the time we stand up at church and then we... <laughs> how are you going to fast? Joshua, how are you going to fast? <laughs> Alex, how are you going to fast? <laughs> Pastor Paul, how, how, how are you going to fast? Because So this is, this, this is a way for me to ask you to force your neighbor to fast. Because maybe he's planning not to fast, you know? I know those people. They are like, you know... It's, I'm not supposed to fast. I'm not going to fast. So ask him, how are you going to fast? <laughs> because last time, remember, uh, I asked you this question. How many bowls of fufu have you removed already, you know, on your diet? Because you, you are supposed to remove some bowls of fufu. You prepare fasting by fasting. Fasting in a certain way. You, pre you prepare prayer by prayer and you, you prepare fasting by fasting. So how many bowls of fufu have you removed already? One, two. This is, <laughs> this is Jesus teaching. And uh, you know Jesus told from uh, Matthew chapter 5 to Matthew 7. And uh, when he... He began to teach. He was showing people the very meaning of what we call blessing. You know, he was saying uh, in Matthew chapter 5, blessed be the one who did this, blessed be the one who did that. He started his teaching talking about the blessing, the meaning of the blessing according to God. And uh, uh, he taught about, uh, you guys have heard long ago it was say. It was said that you had to do this and that, but I'm telling you, this is how you have to do things. People were amazed, but they were also uh, frustrated a little bit because they thought that he was uh, refusing the law. He was refusing what Moses uh, said. Yet when you, you read the Bible in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 18, Moses was saying that, Time will come and God will send to you a prophet like me. You know that, right? Deuteronomy chapter 18 from uh, 16. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your fellow Israelites. You must listen to him. If you guys, you don't listen to him, I'm, I'm going to judge you. I know that sometimes you decide not to listen to Moses, no problem. But when that prophet will come, I will be judging those who will not respect, those who will not hear, listen, what he will be saying. And you, we all know that Moses was talking about Jesus. Jesus. That's why Joshua, we, who came after Moses, 
the name of Joshua, you know, it the same root than Jesus. Because God was aiming Jesus in that prophecy. And when Jesus came, they didn't realize that Moses talked about Jesus coming. That's why Jesus had to like to recap a little bit the law, but giving it another meaning. And you see, when he was teaching, he saw that these people are not believing what I'm saying. They are like, <laughs> they are shocked because they think that I'm refusing, I'm abolishing the law. That's why he said, don't think that I'm here to abolish the law. I'm not here to abolish uh, uh, Moses. I'm just giving you the very meaning of what Moses was saying. I'm here to tell you how you can really please God because you cannot please God through the law. You cannot try to, try to accomplish the law so that God can be pleased. But I'm trying to show you not the shortcut, but the, the very meaning because if you guys please the Father, then you will be you will find yourself accomplish, accomplishing the law. It's automatic. When you please God, you will be accomplishing the law. But when you, you try to accomplish the law, you are not sure to please God. So that's why I'm, I'm giving you the very meaning of the law, how you have to accomplish the law by pleasing my Father's heart. And then in chapter 6, he told about three things, important things. I want you to notice that in, the ch in, in this chapter, he talked about three things. In the beginning, he said, when you have to give your offering or you, you have to give to someone, don't make it to be known. It, it must be a secret. He told about how to give, how to pray. He said, how, when you pray, you have to do this, to do that this way. When you give, this is how you have to do that. And when you fast, this is how you have to do that. So he was talking about three things. Giving, praying, and fasting. You will see that actually Jesus was trying to address the things that Israelites didn't understand from the law. They were doing it like just an habit. Just a, they made it to be a tradition but they were not really fulfilling the will of God doing that. And Jesus said, I have to address this problem. You guys have a problem with how you pray. You have a problem with how you give. You boast yourself that you give. But you have the way you are doing it. You are just advertising everywhere that you are praying. Remember, he told about the, this uh, a Pharisee praying, and the poor sinner trying to reach God in his heart, and the other one saying that, oh, Lord, I, pra I praise you because I'm not like, you know, like others. What is bizarre is that in our church today, we have people like that. We have Pharisees, many Pharisees. I pray God to, put, to take away that spirit in this church. We don't want to have Pharisees here. <laughs> We, we want to have really children of God. So when he addressed the problem about praying, about giving, about fasting, he said, when you fast, there is a certain way you have to do that. That's why I'm here to tell you, to ask you that question. How are you planning to fast? How is that going to be for you? Because we're gonna, we will start at the ninth, right? Yeah, the ninth. How are you going to fast? This is, I think, what you have to know before fasting. Very important. So when we see what Jesus is saying here, the first thing to notice here, Jesus is trying to tell us that fasting has a divine reward. When you fast, you have to wait for some, uh, something from the Lord. There is a result. There will be a result. The wrong way or the right way. There will be a reward. You have to know that when you engage yourself fasting, 
there will be a result. Oh, no need to tell you how people think in my country when they fast. Say, so, uh, I'm going to fast to have this. I'm going to fast to have that. I'm going to fast for my marriage. Hey, people fast for many things there. <laughs> so it became like, a, you know, a critical formula. You know, I, I can pray. I can, I can sing. I can praise God. I can, but when I decide to fast, things must be fast. <laughs> so we made fasting like, you know, the higher prayer. So the, you know, this is how you can reach God the, the, the fastest way. When you pray, God look at you, oh, you pray, I like that. When you fast, even God and angels, they are like, hey, this guy is about to die. We have to do something. <laughs> this is a lie, brothers and sisters. This is a lie from the devil. Trying to put, like, to put our spirits in the second law. This is a lie. So people used to fast saying that, okay, God, I prayed. I didn't see the result. I went to church. I didn't see the result. Now is now. I'm going to fast. Lord, if you are not fast in my problem, you will have a problem with me. So we think that fasting will make things to be fast in our life. This is not true. That's why Jesus was like, mm, I have to address this problem. And other people think that fasting makes you to be like holy. You know, when you fast, you are pure. Because you don't even, you know, you don't even put oil, uh, spices in your body. So you, you are pure. You are just, you know, drinking water. So you are trying to purify yourself when you fast. Even your body will be pure. Yeah. I think talking with a, a physician is going to tell you, yeah, it's good. It's, it, it does good in your body when you fast. But thinking that the fact of fasting will make you to be pure before God, this is a lie. This is a lie. And I know we've, we've been all, you know, believing on those lies. Even you and I, I, I know. Uh, maybe I'm the first to... But this is not what the Bible teaches about fasting. Jesus says that there is a reward, but not that kind of reward you are, you, are, you are thinking about. Jesus says that when you fast, you have to wait the heaven to do something for you. This is true. That's why when we fast, we wait upon God to do something in our life. We wait upon God to intervene in our, in our situations. Is there anybody here fasting because you want to have like a car, like pragma? You know pragma, right? Fasting for pragma. You're, you, you may be right because when you fast, there is a reward. But Jesus says this, that reward will come to you only if you make your fasting to be something only between you and the Father. And that's my second point. Fasting must be an expression of a personal intimacy with God. When you fast, it's about you and God. We are not supposed to know. That's why Jesus says that, uh, you know, the, the hypocrites, the way they do things, they will make it to be known to everybody. When you meet them, they will say, oh, what, uh, 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 what happens in your life? I'm fasting. I'm fasting. I don't want to talk to people because you are <laughs> distracting me. <laughs> don't distract me. Don't disturb my fasting. There are people like in their door, on their doors, you, you're going to find, do not disturb fasting. 
You know those kind of doors, right? You know those kind of doors, right? Fasting. They remove the image on the, on the profile, but they just put fasting, like in God's presence, on your phone, <laughs> WhatsApp, Facebook. I've revo- removed my face. I don't want people to see my face because I'm, I'm somewhere. I'm hiding myself because I have to seek the Lord's face. So, I'm going to write at least fasting or seeking God's face or, you know, um, in the presence of the Lord. (laughs) You are trying to make it to be known. (laughs) I don't know if you know that, you know, your profile, your your Facebook, your status, all those things, they they are your doors. They are a way for you to make things to be known you know sometimes you can know that this guy has a this guy have a problem has a problem against this one just looking at the door just looking at the facebook i know a a a couple uh, because we've been you know uh, training them and then uh, one day i saw that uh, i saw the that emoji with the tears oh from the wife's statue. And I was like, what happens? Okay, when I talked to them, then I, I saw that the, they had a problem. What happens? Ah, daddy. You know, they like to call people daddy. Ah, daddy. Hmm. There is something wrong with your son. No? What? Ah, hmm. we've been fighting this morning. Why? What happened? So you know how I I knew this? I knew that because of your Facebook, because of your WhatsApp. You guys have, you you used to advertise everything. You have to be careful in your life. You don't need to advertise things. You don't need it. Even praying, you don't need it. We will tell you what to advertise as a church. We will give you the, the... that visual, the flyer, and th- 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 those things you have to put on your Facebook, on your WhatsApp. But don't advertise your problems. Don't av- advertise that you are fasting. This is you making it to be known. So Jesus is talking about you. Don't think that he's just talking about Pharisees here. You are one of them when you put it on your WhatsApp. So it's about you and God. It's about you. It's about your intimacy. You and God. Because when we fast, because we have a goal, and that goal is spiritual. We have a spiritual goal. So you are not trying to please anybody. If you do that to please, to please me as a pastor, then you are not going to get your reward from God. Jesus said that you have already your reward. You have your full reward. <laughs> wow. Listen to this. Jesus says that uh, so that... Uh, I, I, I love this. He says, um, truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. In full. Because if you please me, and I'm like, oh, Sister Divine is fasting, and hmm, her fast is really fast. Huh? And it's really, you know, a very good fasting. Then this is your reward, actually. Because I've told you that you are doing it well. And now you are like, oh, I wanted people to see that I'm doing it well. So that's your full reward. Don't expect something from God. (laughs) But if you expect something from heaven, making something relative only to your intimacy, you with God, you and God, because you are after something spiritual, in your life. I pray God during this time of, of, of fasting. I know that some of you are trying to do the, the, those 40 days, uh, 40 day fasting. But you know that here we, we will be doing 21 day fasting. I pray God that your fasting be a good one. And I pray God that you expect a reward from God. Not from people. Not from this church. You know sometimes I know it will come. And I know it's not a prophecy. I know that one day you will find yourself like, eh, I'm dying. 
bring me a piece of what I'm, I'm not supposed to eat. <laughs> give, me, give, give me a piece of that. I know it will come. But let me tell you, when it comes, don't be guilty. Don't be guilty. It may come. It, if it comes, no problem. After that, come back fasting. Do you see what I'm, what I'm trying to say? Yeah, I'm not, I, hey, I know, hey, I'm not trying to say, guys, you are allowed, to, you are, no, I'm not saying that, but I know it will come. I'm just trying to free you from guilty, because I know how the devil will, you know, I know how the devil works. When you feel guilty, then he comes, you know, you have destroyed your fasting, so how can you expect, expect something for, from God? So I know how the devil will be working. So it will come when it comes. Do you listen to what I'm saying? Huh? I'm talking as a pastor. I know it will come. I'm gonna, because you, you know, when it, when it comes, then we meet here, then you know that day you ate something in the morning. And then we are here. Oh, God is sustaining us. Oh, Lord, we thank you. Then you, you don't know how to pray. Because you're like, you're like mm, mm. oh, brothers and sisters, oh, praise the Lord. You know, till now, not eating fufu, but we are there. The Holy Spirit. Then you are, I don't know if I, if I have to say amen or not. Because something happened with me. And then. You know, unfortunately, if we ask you a question individually, oh, what about you? You're like, uh, um. so you don't know, am I going to lie or not? Then you are condemning yourself. I know how the devil works. And I'm telling you, this is where maturity comes. <laughs> Jesus said, it's, it's not about you. And you with me. You are not expecting something from me. You are expecting something from God. So when it comes to you. That you ate fufu. That day. Just come back fasting. After that pray. Say Lord help me. I'm seeking your face. It's not about Pastor Freddy. It's not about. <laughs> it's about you Lord. Help me. I'm telling you. The, you know, God will be happy with you. I'm telling you. But when you become guilty, then you have a problem. Because in the Bible, the word guilty or guilt means sin. <laughs> the time you are guilty, then you, you are sinning. <laughs> I know this is another topic. You know, conscience... Being conscious of, 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 of your sin, you know, feeling guilty and those stuff. I know this is another topic, but I'm trying to, to ease you guys. When it comes, you have heard about me telling you that when it comes, just come back fasting. God is not condemning you. Do you see what I'm saying? Okay. It's going to come. It's not a prophecy. I'm telling you. It's not a prophecy. So don't find yourself here like we are, we are praising God because he's sustaining us. Then you, you don't know how to praise God. Lord, must I say that you are sustaining us because... <laughs> Pray God. He's sustaining you also. Because after that, you will come back fasting. And you're not going to eat what we told you not to eat. Okay? So... You are waiting from, you are expecting something from God. That's what Jesus is trying to say. And then, something else. I told it here. Fasting must be free of hypocrisy. Don't be hypocrite. Just be yourself. Just be yourself. Maybe you have decided, we're going to talk to Pastor Freddy. We'll bring physicians here and they will... Talk to us about how we'll be fasting, what is the advantages of fasting for your body, because you have also to lose weight. Mm -hmm. This is good for you. It's, it's good for your diet. You, you have to lose weight. <laughs> it's very important for you. But uh, by the way, 
You know, this actually this is not a preaching that I prepared. So I'm, 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 I'm just, you know, trying to prepare you for fasting. By the way, you know, fasting is not a way only for us to lose weight for our diet, but it's also an, a spiritual exercise. So it helps you to lose weight spiritually. Yes. Because, you know, listening to preaching, to, to preachings, to, to teachings, all those things, is like you are eating spiritually. But when you eat, you know that you have also some useless things when you eat. And those things must be carried out. You see what I mean? You have those calories that you have to burn actually and spiritually when you receive teachings you receive uh, those preachings the way you understand them makes them to have like important things and useless things you know when you listen to a teaching then you are like oh pastor said that no we have to act like this so that you start your religion so you make it to be like a tradition Ah, those parts, the traditional part of a preaching is a useless thing. It's something that you have to burn. It's a calorie that you have to, to burn. <laughs> and the way you burn spiritual calorie, those excessive calories, those useless calories that you have to burn, the way you do that is by fasting and praying. Because you are alone in the presence of the Lord and there... God will be telling you, this is useless in your life. You, you know, sometimes when we come to church, we wait for the pastor to tell us, you have to do this, you have to do that, this is useless for you. But sometimes you need the Holy Spirit to let you know what is important and what, what is useless in your life. That is something that you don't find here in the church during a service. That is something that you find yourself when you are with God, fasting and praying. That's why fasting is, is, is like a spiritual exercise. Do you see that? And every time that you decide to obey, to do this kind of exercise, it's physical, right? But you will have results in the spiritual realm. You will have it. No need for me to tell you the story with Moses. How can you explain that the old man having like his hands up and then the army winning the battle? There is no link. Scientif scientifically speaking, there is, no there is no link. But spiritually speaking, there is a link between you obeying God and having reward from heaven. That's why the way you obey these days of fasting make you to receive something from heaven. I'm telling you, there is something that will come from heaven. You know, we are, we are calling it another dimension, not for nothing. <laughs> something will happen. You will find yourself on another level. Because we need another level. I don't know about you, but I need another level in my life. I'm just fed up. You know, bearing the same things, you know, from years, from long ago. I'm living the same things. To, I need another dimension, another level. So if you need another level like me, then you are in a good place. And this period will be a very good period for you. Because you obeying God. That's why I'm like... Don't try to be guilt because that day you couldn't and then you, in the morning you were like, hey, no problem. You know what? Because that day, ooh, I like this. The old man could not, you know, sustain his hands like this. Something happened and he was like, oh, I cannot, oh, oh. And then they find a way. They find a stone. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Find your stone, but keep your hands up. Find your stone. Maybe, no, you know, I have this problem of health. I have this one. I, hey, no problem. Find a stone. I don't know what will be your stone, but keep fasting. Amen. Find your stone. Maybe it's going to be, I don't know. We're going to talk to the physician, and he will tell us, yeah, maybe for you, uh, 
you will need to eat this in the morning, but keep your hands up. Do you see what I'm saying? Because there is, spiritually, there will be results. And I'm telling you, I'm trying to tell you just also as a prophecy that God decided to do something new in your life. And this is the period where you have to benefit from that. In your job, in your family, things will be changed. Things will be changed. In this church, ooh, Pastor Freddy, time will come. Let me tell, tell them a little bit of, huh? just a little bit. We, we, are, we are working on the project of this church. I mean the technical side, and we will present it to you guys. <laughs> it's going to be fantastic, I'm telling you. <laughs> you will come to this church, and then you will ask, like, where are we here? Because God has given us intelligence for that. We'll be working for that, and I think it's part of the, 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 the next level of this church. And trust me, <laughs> Ooh, you will not recognize this church. It's just a, you know, a question of months, and you will see. Not because of me, because of who you will become. <laughs> it's a, I'm, I'm not talking about me, I'm talking about you. I'm talking about things that God will be doing through you in this church. Because there is another dimension. So, now let me read to you what Jesus was trying to tell them because they are like guys everything was already written in the law but you didn't just understand because you have all your heart in the law instead of having them in God just as I said if you 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 don't please God trying to fulfill the law I've seen people like yeah I have to do this I have to do that I have to be like this so that God will be pleased no you don't need that Seek God's face. Seek God's heart. Because when you please God, you will find yourself accomplishing the law. Even if, you know, in front of people, it's going to be like, hey, what is this? Yeah. As long as God agree with me, then I don't care about what you say. <laughs> Amen. So, Isaiah, I want us to read Isaiah chapter uh, 58. So this is actually what Jesus was trying to make them understand. Let's read from verse 3. Isaiah chapter 58. Are you with me? Okay, Isaiah chapter 58. Let me find it on my Bible. 58. 58. Yeah, verse 3. I'm still reading from the NIV. The Bible says this. Are you with me? Why have we fasted? Okay? Are you there? Isaiah 58, verse 3. Why have we fasted? They say. These are actually uh, Israelites complaining. Why have we fasted? They say. And... You have not seen it. They are, they are telling God. Lord, we have fasted. But it's like you don't have your eyes on us. Why have we humbled ourselves and you have not noticed? We are doing things, Lord. But it's, you know, it's just like you, you don't see anything. You, you don't do anything. You just leave us like that. We are fasting. We are praying. I've received many questions. People saying like, Pastor, I have fasted already. What am I going to expect from God now? Because I have fasted and I didn't receive what I was expecting. Is there anybody frustrated about, about that? I'm the first one. I'm the first one. Is there anybody who fasted and then you are like, you cannot say, God, you are, you are not good. Because you know it's God. But you know in your heart. And you, you cannot say, God, you are frustrating me. Still, I am frustrated. Maybe not from you, God, but I am. I, I'm the first one. Have you, have you seen things like that, like, like that in your life? No, I have prayed. I have fasted. But maybe you have given. Maybe the Prince of Peace is somewhere there. I don't know. 
But Lord, I have not received. So I'm frustrated. You know, there is nothing new in, uh, on the earth. That word they were saying. Yet on the day of your fasting, that word God is saying. Yet on the day of your fasting, you do as you please and exploit all your workers. Because the, the law said that when you are fasting, right, you have to free your workers. They don't have to work. You don't have to put burden on some, someone when, when, when it's, time of, it's time of fasting. Yet, they were doing it. That's why God is trying to remind them what they are doing. He says, you do as you please. You do as you please. So you are doing it your own way. You are doing it to satisfy your heart. You know, sometimes we do things to satisfy our religious heart. Because I know that if I do this, normally the formula is when I do this, that, that, that. When I give 100, I'm supposed to receive 1,000. When I give 1,000, it must be not less than 10,000. That, that, that's our religious heart. So when I do this and that and that, God will see this and then God will do that. Are you sure? This is a lie from the devil. And I pray God to deliver us from that, from those lies. Amen. And then he says this. Your fasting ends with quarreling and strife and in striking each other with wicked fists. Guys, how comes that you, you are fasting but at the end of the day they find you fighting somewhere? How comes that you are, you are, you are I'm, hey, hey, I'm telling you, what was the question in the beginning? How are you going to fast? How comes that you fast, but you are doing corruption at work? During the period, even the period of fasting, normally you are not supposed to do that. Even after fasting, you are not supposed to be doing corruption. But at least, at least... If I put myself in the side of, of religion, <laughs> how comes that you do that while fasting? This is not normal. You fight each other. Do you have people that you fight? Now, when I'm speaking. You fight someone at work? Are you fighting someone? Because you feel like insecure? You are like, hey, this guy, huh? huh. Yeah, I think tomorrow, after tomorrow, I'm going to lose my job because of him, because he's talented. Hey, you are fighting someone. You are fighting someone. So if you are planning to fast while you know that you will be fighting someone, then you are here in this part of the scriptures. And the Bible says that you guys, that you, you are quarreling each other. You are quarreling. So you, what, at the end of your fasting, you, you find yourself quarreling. How comes? Especially in the church. People have things in their hearts. And then they serve God. They pray God. They fast. Wow. Quarreling. This is not the way you have to fast. The Bible says this. Ooh, actually, this is my preaching. I think this, uh, I should have started here. <laughs> this is my preaching. And the Bible says this. Hey, where, where am I? I'm lost. Okay. You cannot fast as you do today and exp Oh, Can you read it with me? Can you read it with me? One, two, three. You cannot fast as you do today and expect your voice to be heard on Simple. So God is trying to say, the, the way you fast today, don't expect anything from God. Isn't it what Jesus is trying to say? <laughs> so please, please, I don't want you to fast, and after fasting, you're still the same. Please, please, Lord, have mercy on us. Don't let us just fast, and after that, we're still the same. No. So, number five. Is this the kind of fast I have chosen? Now God is trying to tell them. 
This is what it should do. It should be. Only a day, uh -huh. God is trying to, to, is questioning. Is this the kind of fast I have chosen? Only a day for people to humble themselves. Do you think that fasting is just you humbling yourself? That's what God is, God is trying to ask you. Do you think that fasting is all about food? Like making, you know, doing that, that, that hunger, uh, hunger strike. Do you think it's just that? Or you think that fasting is, uh, is, is it only a bowing one's head like a reed? Do you think that fasting is just like you being like, hmm, we are fasting. Hmm. Hmm. And I prayed all the night. I lost my voice yeah, because we are fasting. God said also, and for laying the sackcloth, because they have that culture, during fasting they will wear the sackcloth and they will put the, the ashes, you know. So showing that we are not in a good state. <laughs> we have a problem. So God, you will hear us. We have a problem. That's how people used to fight. They, they, they used to fast. So they put themselves in a mood where even God will know that I have a problem. Wow. Are you sure? <laughs> God knows your problem before you even know it. <laughs> and then God is trying to question. Is that what you call a fast? This is my question this morning. A day acceptable to the Lord. Do you think that... Fasting is about you, like bowing your head, like it's about, actually, what people do, the mistake that people do, they make fasting to be the goal. Fasting is not the goal. We are not striving so that at the end of the day, we fast. No. Fasting is a way. The goal is something else. Do you see what I'm, what I'm saying? The goal is something else. Actually, the goal is to pray, and I'm going to tell you. The goal is something else. Now, fasting is a way for us to reach that goal. So don't put in your mind that, yeah, oh, Lord, help me to fast. Lord, God, yeah, that, this is a good prayer. Yeah, uh, you, you can do that. But you have to. You, you have to follow the goal. You have to go there. There is an aim. There is a target. And fasting is like a taxi taking you there. So don't make fasting. That's why people are like, okay, did you eat today? No, I didn't eat. Hey, oh, you are fasting well. <laughs> this is not the goal. <laughs> did you eat uh, fufu? No, 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 no. Only water. Besides, I've decided, I, 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 I decided from, from my part that I'm not going to eat, even vegetables, I'm not going to eat them. Only water. Mm, so that mm, they are professional fasting. <laughs> Telling you, wow, we're going to do professional fasting. So only water. Hey, we, we, we are going to be like Jesus. Your fasting is like, you know, something light, you know. <laughs> you are doing the light fasting. We are doing the very fasting, the Jesus fasting, only water. Fasting is not the goal. Don't forget. We are not aiming to fast at the end of the day, at all cost. No, we are fasting to do something. So now, listen to this, verse 6. Is not this the kind of fasting I have chosen? Now the Lord is, the, is telling them. One, to lose the chains of injustice. So meaning that we will be fasting 21 days to tell God, Lord, injustice must be taken away from us. This is not normal. We cannot be children of God and continue living in injustice. And when I'm talking about injustice, I'm not talking about, the, you know, those political guys first. I'm talking about you because you are the, the, the first one to restore justice where you are. In your family, in this church, in your job. So we are fast. we're going to take 21 days, I don't know if you realize that, 21 days telling God, injustice must go away. 
So one, to, you have to lose the chains of injustice. So, meaning that if someone is bearing right now your injustice, you have to solve that problem. You see this? If there is someone in the world, somewhere, who is bearing, suffering from injustice coming from you, you have to solve this problem. That's the kind of fasting. So you will be fasting for that. And untie the cord of the yoke. If there is something, some, somebody suffering from the yoke coming from you, a burden, something very weight because of you, that family is suffering today, you have during these 21 days of fasting, you have to go and solve the problem. You see this? This is a little bit tough. But that's why we are fasting. So we are focusing on that. Okay? I know these kinds of people that say, uh, fasting, hey, yeah, I'm going to fast only my makeup. Uh, no, 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 no. Fasting is not about, no, it's not you. Besides, Jesus is, say, is saying this. When you fast, put your makeup. Put it. Put it. Put it. Put it. Do your makeup. Do it well. You see? It's not about that. It's about this. To set the oppressed free and break every yoke. Is it not to share your food? So meaning, before talking about food. So meaning that if you have someone in your heart, someone wounded you so bad, I know, we have been all wounded. Maybe you, you, you have not yet healed from that. You are not yet healed from that. And you've been wounded so bad that when you think about that story, then you are like, oh my God. It even hinders you from getting divine blessing. If you have problems like that, you have people in your heart. You know that if I'm here today, if I'm this today, if I'm in this situation, it's because of him. And then you are like, oh, Lord, let your justice to be done. So that, oh, no, that is not from God. I know those kinds of prayers. Oh, Lord, you see, you see what, what they did to me. Lord, I'm just talking about your justice to be done. What do you want God to do? Just say it clearly. Just say, God, kill him. <laughs> just, just say it clearly Lord make him to live something in his life so that he will recognize that it's because he has done this to me you know it's, it feels good huh? when some, somebody leaves something and then you are like and then he knows that ah, it's because I did that uh -huh. you have received it now in Lingala it's, it's better it's <laughs> it so if you have such situation the Bible says that this is a burden that you, you put on someone because th that, that person will not be happy in his life. Every time God will look at you crying for that situation, that person will not be blessed. And not only him, his family will not be blessed. His children will not be blessed. So what God expects from you before you expecting something from him while fasting God wants you to free those people in your heart. I know they have, they have done so bad things to you. But because you, you, you are a, ch a child of God, they are oppressed for that. So spiritually, they will never, never be blessed in a certain level. Because you still cry today. So... During 21 days of fasting, we tell God, Lord, they are free. They don't owe me anything. I know they did this and that and that and that. And I think this is the best time to do metamorpho. I know they did this and that and that and that. But Lord, <laughs> they don't owe me anything. I'm not their victim. I'm a victim of your love. Because you went on the cross for me. So you have to free them. Am I clear in what, what I'm saying? 
I pray God to help you to do that because it's important for you. Because you also will not go far in your life. You will not go further in your life if you have people in your heart. Because you will consider yourself as being a victim. Oh, you are now a victim. You are no longer a slave. You are not a slave of somebody. You are not a victim. I refuse to be a victim, a victim of anybody. You know, wh whatever word they have done to me, I refuse to be a victim of anybody. I refuse it. So, now, is it not to share your food with the hungry? Aha! Let me make it clear. Fasting is not you trying to, like, to store up food. Uh, you know, I'm not eating. I'm going to store my food so that when I'm done. Hey, hey. You know, I heard people saying, eh? no, let me come here. I heard people saying this. They, they are like, uh, ah, you know, the time of fasting is very good because we will we, we'll make some provision. So that when we, are, you know, we'll be eating only vegetables, vegetables, and when we are done, you are doing it wrong. The Bible says this, when you fast, you make exactly the same provision, but not for you. <laughs> if, you if in your provision, in a month, you used to have like chicken, beans, rice, all those things. So you do the same thing, but it's not going to be for you. You give it to someone else. This is the kind of fasting God is expecting from you. Give to someone else. Don't try to store up so that after that, uh, 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 uh. don't say that someone want to eat you. Hey, hey, don't eat this because I'm going to eat this uh, after. You know that, uh, right? Hey, 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 in the evening I'm going to eat it. No, give to people. Give to someone. <laughs> uh, 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 I've been sent this voice, this uh, WhatsApp voice, voice note. Where someone was conducting prayer, and they were like, yeah, pray, 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 my, my brother, pray, pray, pray. Yeah, pray. And oh, Rabba Baba I was speaking in tongues. And then something happened. So I don't know what happened, but we heard a voice saying that, uh, who is this, this, uh, this food? Uh, we heard it, you know, from his side, his side. So it was like, I don't know if it was his sister or someone else. It's like, oh, whose food is this? And it was like, oh, yeah, pray, my brother, pray, pray. <laughs> when he heard his sister saying that, okay, well, I'm going to eat it because. Eh? We heard, oh, shabba, ba, 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 da, 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 sh no, don't eat it. It's, it's, it's for me. Uh, uh, yeah, keep praying, keep praying. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> And I was like, my God. Because it was disturbing us, you know, praying. And then it was like, yeah, you have to pray. You have, yeah, whose food is this? Whose food? Okay. And I, when he heard, okay, I'm going to eat it. He was like, don't eat it. Hey, it's for me. Hey, uh, yeah, yeah, keep praying, keep praying. <laughs> don't do that while fasting. Take your food, give to someone else. Is it clear? And to provide the poor wanderer. With shelter, find someone who needs to be protected during these 21 days of fasting. Find someone in your surrounding. Find someone who needs to be protected in a certain way. I don't know, maybe he's, he's lacking, maybe, I don't know, school fees or something like that. But find someone who needs to be protected. Find someone. And give him protection. Give him protection. We, I, I'm telling you, we have 21 days for that. So find at least one person during that day. Because now you are not eating normally, so you can raise some money for that. So don't store up your money. Like, do you see this mentality? Don't store up your money. Like, hey, this is time of fasting, so I can't st Don't store Put the same amount of money, but for someone else. Ask your neighbor, how are you going to fast? I'm not talking about the 
the 21 days. No, I'm not talking about the number of days. I'm <laughs> talking about how are you going to be managing that. When you see the naked, to clothe them. When we fast, we find the, the best clothes that we have. We give to people. Brothers and sisters, I'm telling you, another dimension is ready for us. Some of us are experiencing it already. But I'm telling you, during that time of fasting, do those things. Find someone. Give him the best. I'm telling you, the best. Not something that you have, you know, you have put, you know, for like 20 years and then now you're like, okay. We, we've been asked during the fasting time to give to somebody. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about something new, something good that you would like to put yourself. Remember, God was telling people, give this to your governor first. If your governor accepts that, then bring it to me. If not, why are you bringing to me something that your governor will not accept? And lastly, not to turn, I want to read this with you, not to turn away from your own flesh and blood. You, we have to be careful. You have to be careful. The Bible is talking about family here. During fasting, you have to think about your family. So we've been said in this country, when you fast, when you pray, your family is the first barrier to you. So you have to chase them as, uh, you know, just like demons. This is the contrary. The Bible asks us to think about our family. Do good to your family. Find gifts to give to your father to your mother, to your brothers, to your sisters. Make them to be joyful while you are fasting. Can you imagine? Now see this. You are fasting, you are praying, and someone else is like, oh Lord, bless him. Bless him because of this, because of that. Can you imagine your family praying for you while you are fasting? Your family telling God, oh God, oh what Eric did to us. Oh, we are so happy. Lord, bless him. And you are fasting. Wow! You are receiving a reward from heaven, not because you are praying, but because you made people to believe that God can remember them and respond to their questions. Because actually, and now, while we are here preparing our fasting time, there are people asking things to God. Can you imagine? They are like, God, can you give me this? God, this is my last year. I don't have school fees. How am I, am I going to finish this year? Lord, if only I, I could have like a suit and, and things like that. Lord, if only I, I, I could have it. They are praying. And you will be a divine answer to them. So when you put yourself in a, a way that you are a, 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 an answer from God for people. And you put yourself in the fasting period. <laughs> do you think that God will leave you just like that? Impossible. And look at this. The Bible says, then your light will break forth like a dawn. And your healing will quickly appear. Sometimes you've been waiting for healing from God. But this is the formula. You don't need a pastor to pray for you. You just, you just need to open your heart and to free someone. It's going to heal you, I'm telling you. It's going to heal your bones. It's going to heal your blood. It's going to heal your, your, your flesh. It's going to heal you. It's going to heal your body. Then your righteousness will go before you. Meaning that even where you work, if there is a lot of injustice because you've been doing this, 
every time you are somewhere, people will try to, to be righteous to you because you, you, you are answering, you, you, you put yourself to be an answer from God for people. Your righteousness will go before you. So you will not be bearing injustice every time. Even if where you are, people are bearing injustice, but at your turn, things will change. Because you are different. And this is the kind of difference we are waiting from this other dimension. I'm somewhere, things are done in a certain way, but because I'm there, the kingdom of God is there. And the kingdom of God is righteousness, it's peace, and joy by the Holy Spirit. But you have to do this. And the glory of the Lord will be real, your real God. Then you will call. And the Lord will answer. You see this? You will cry for help. And he will say, here I am. Oh, I want this in my life. I want this in my life. I don't know about you. I don't even know which kind of prayer. I don't know, Pastor Freddy, who is leading prayer now. If we, we don't have anybody, I'm going to choose. But uh, I'm going to choose Pastor Paul to come and lead prayer during this time. But I want us to pray. I don't know in which direction we're going to pray. But I want you to, to think in your heart. Is there anybody who is bearing your anger now is there anybody who is bearing your anger is there anybody who wounded you and now when you see your life when you look at yourself then you're like i'm this because of that because of him and you are expecting god to punish him so that you will be happy let me tell you that person being punished will not change your situation but if you become an answer from God for many people around you, this is actually what will change your life. I have decided, Pastor Freddy, I don't know about you, I'm not asking you to do that. But when I saw this verse, I was like, Lord, have mercy. I have condemned God for very long. Lord, I pray, I fast, I don't see a result in my life. But now, I've understood that I've been fasting the wrong way. And especially as a pastor, I've been thinking that fasting is all about coming here, you know, preaching people, telling them that they have to be strong enough because, you know, the Holy Spirit will be sustaining us not to eat. Fasting is not about not eating. And fasting is not the goal. Fasting is a way for you to accomplish these things. And I have decided, Sister Divine, I have decided that all those, all, all those people who owe me something, I decided to free them, even money. Even money. So I called them. I told them. You don't owe me anymore. You don't owe me anymore. You don't owe me anymore. You don't owe me. You don't owe me. Yeah, I owe you that money. Mm -mm, you don't owe me. It's, uh, you know, except from my salary. When I, I did a job, I, I need to be paid. This is normal. But those who ask me, can you please help me with some money? And, and then I'm going to give you back. I told them. You don't owe me anything. You know why? Because the Bible says when you give to your brother, don't ex expect him to give it back. So I have decided now to do that. <laughs> it's a lot of money. <laughs> and I'm crying in my heart. But I said, Lord, I'm going to experience you now. How are you going to fast? How are you going to fast? Let's sing this song again to see your face. Because we will be seeking God's face. 
to see your face and all of your beauty to know your grace and all of your glory mm. this is my cry oh lord my heart desire oh lord to see your face to know your grace this is my cry if you seek God's face, sing it with me. To see your face. Mm. And all of your beauty. To know your grace. To know your grace. And all of your glory. And all of your glory. This is my cry, O Lord. This is my cry, oh Lord, my heart desire, oh Lord, to see your face, to know your grace. This is my cry. Hallelujah. If you don't mind, if you can all please stand. Hallelujah. I know time, um, time has passed by, so we're just going to pray this. Um, you know, fasting is a matter really of the heart. Hallelujah. So if you don't mind, we're just going to take a few minutes just to pray. Um, I'm just going to read from the Amplified Version. Um, Isaiah 58 verse 6 says, Rather, is this not the fast that which I have chosen? This is the Lord speaking. And he says, one, to undo the bonds of wickedness. Two, to tear to pieces the ropes of the yoke. Three, to let the oppressed go free. And then four, to break apart every enslaving yoke. So during that, this time of prayer and fasting, we do believe that the Lord will perform things in our own lives. There are sins that we are struggling, struggling with. Some of us may have issues of pride. Some may be issues of anger, anger management, overly sensitive. Some of us may be issues of laziness. Some of us may have issues of prayerlessness, not being able to pray consistently. Some of us may be issues of not being able to read the Bible consistently. Some of us may be issues of joblessness. Some may be issues of not being able to, uh, to give, to be generous in our giving. So it may be all kind of different issues. Some of us may be healing or health issues. Amen? But during this time, as we humble ourselves, because fasting is about humbling ourselves before the Lord. Because this flesh and its desire must be put to death. It's not about killing, but the flesh. You know? And the reason we need fasting, you know, every time you notice that we, you are still struggling with sin, that you cannot overcome just by praying. Change gears. Go into fasting. You see, usually in churches, we are very good talking about sin, obvious, like sexual immorality. Those ones we hit very hard. But when it comes to issues like anger, coming late to work, looking down on people, talking back or talking about other people's behind the back, gossiping, murmuring, complaining, those kind of things, we usually really don't talk about those kind of things. So, but today we just want to take just a, just a few minutes. I know time has passed by, but go before the Lord and let's just pray that the spirit of the Lord will give us the grace as a church to be prepared to enter into this time of prayer and fasting. Can we do that? So this is the moment where you talk, this is between you and the Lord. Just, just talk to him. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we have come today as a church, as a body. And Father, we are praying. Now you know exactly, I don't know my brother, my sister's problems and whatever they're dealing with. But Father, we have come today and we are asking, it is not by power. It is not by might. It is by your spirit. 
So Spirit of the living God, we are praying today, will you give us the grace that as we're shifting gears, as we are embarking in this journey of 21 days of prayer and fasting, as we are embarking in this in this journey to seek your face as we humble ourselves before you in this time of prayer. Lord, whatever yokes we are dealing with, whatever struggles, whatever addictions, whatever things we sin that we cannot really get over, Father, I pray that by your spirit, because it is your anointing that can break yokes. So, Father, we pray that in this time of prayer and fasting, we'll be free from anger, free, Lord God, from any kind of distraction, things, sin that easily beset us. Father, we pray, give the grace, your precious grace to this church by your spirit that we'll be able to overcome those things. In the name of Jesus, circumcise our hearts from the inside out. Circumcise our heart. Do a surgery in our heart, a metamorphosis, a transformation as we're embarking in this journey. Father, we ask that your grace by your spirit will come. Will come, Lord. Free us the bands of wickedness. Free us from the yokes. Free us from the oppression, the desires of the flesh, the proclivities of the flesh, the weaknesses of our soul, the kind of mindset that is not yours, the kind of volition willing that we have that is not yours, the kind of emotions that we feel that are not yours. Free us from those things as you are going through this time of prayer and fasting. Father, we ask for your help. And I pray that in this time of prayer and fasting, Satan, you will not have the upper hand. For this is a time between us and Jesus. We will not give in to the flesh. We will completely unplug from our daily routine to plug in with things of heaven. That our mind will be set on the things on high where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God the Father. So precious Holy Ghost, have your way. Have your way. Father, you see the heart of your people. Many have fasted before and have not really seen the expected result. And they are wondering, is it going to work this time? But you said, is it not the fast that I have chosen? There is a fast that you have chosen. And there is a fast that we usually choose. But this time around, we want to do your way of fasting. Not the one that we've been do doing for the last couple of years. We want to do fasting your way. So Holy Ghost, teach us your way of fasting in this season. In the name of Jesus. I pray that we will yield, submit, surrender completely to your way of doing this kind of fasting. I pray in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you for this word. And I pray that this word will bring forth fruit in our hearts, Lord. That this word will not just fall on nice ears. Because we don't just want to be hearers of the word. We want to be doers of the word. So Father, give us the grace to obey, to apply in a practical way. All the lessons and the teachings and the principles that we learned this morning. In the name of Jesus. We keep this heart at the bottom of our heart that will not sin against you. We thank you, Father. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' precious name, amen. 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 Can we give it up for Jesus? Glory to Jesus. Amen. Can we once more appreciate our pastor, Pastor Eric? Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much for instructing us. Amen. Uh, I would love quickly if you forgot to put your offering there and um, just a reminder we put offerings at the back there. So, yes. Please come as the ushers are waiting on us. Uh, if you need to drop your tithe or offering, feel free to come. But if you have done it there already, no problem. So ushers, just lift your hand if you have, uh, and you can come. Yeah, just feel free to come, please. There is a hand lifted there, so need for grades. Amen. As, they are, as you are dropping your offering, I would love to remind us that the fasting starts on 9th to the 30th, and we are doing 21 days, not 40. 
we love you that much that uh, Jesus decided for each city that will fast for 21 days. Uh, I know the temptation, you know, when you give birth, like my daughter, she wants to do things of old people. <laughs> uh, time will come, you live in do 50 <laughs> at your own expense. <laughs> Please do 21 days, it's just 21 days. And we'll instruct you more uh, the coming Sunday. I think we'll have more instructions on how that will be uh, in terms of the things to eat, not to eat but also we'll instruct you the hours and how the program will be during the day. Uh, we understand that there is a lot of traffic here in the morning, so we are working on how that will work for us. Uh, in the coming few days, we'll have all the full details about everything, the time, and for the 31 days, how it will be. Amen. Yeah, I don't know if there is anybody who came for the first time. This is your first time to come at ECT. Uh, would you kindly raise? Oh, yes, uh, I see somebody there. Yes, please. Stan, my brother. Is it? Can we welcome him? Oh, there are two people actually. Oh, Gloditos, your first time. I didn't know. Uh, happy to see you. Is it? Can we do better than that again? Just receive. So, would you kindly just go at the back there? We prepared um, yeah, a nice table just to hear more about you. As they are going, can we appreciate them one more time? Uh, we have prayer on Thursday. It happens from 6 to 7.30. Uh, as Pastor Ike said, keep on coming and prepare the fast, the prayer, uh, while praying as well. And Wednesday, it's not, you know, we have our teaching, so we are planning a talk table. We'll tell you not this Wednesday, but the other Wednesday, probably. We'll talk about everything you need to know about your health and how to carry yourself for the 21 days. Amen. And after saying all this, I will love you to stand. And I'm going to ask our brother, Papa Serge Yanga, to come and close for us the service as he comes. Can we appreciate once more our brother? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for this Sunday. Thank you because you are good. Thank you because you do wonders in our lives. Thank you because you never change. Thank you, Father, because this day you knew it even before the creation of the world. And you knew that you will bless us this way. Father, we've been fasting. We've been saying that we are in another dim dimension. But Lord, we know that you are preparing us for something else. Something bigger. Something higher. We thank you in advance for everything that you are going to do, Lord, for these 21 days that we are going to start. I'm going to release blessing upon the people, Father. Please agree on my prayer. People of God, be blessed. May this week be a blessed one. May hundred fall on your right and thousand in your side and you, will, you won't be seen. In Jesus' name, may you receive peace, protection, security. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. Be blessed, guys.
all the volunteers kindly uh, have your seats because we start our meeting soon. Volunteers, please don't go. Uh, just have your seat. Uh, Benjamin, I still need the... Keep the sound for us, please. We'll use the sound. <laughs> 